This video is harrowing as hell. We don't talk about the wear and tear YouTube does to people, but this is really needed. And so seeing this and seeing how much he struggles and how much this stuff really sucked for him, it was hard to watch. And mm -hmm. I think it should be. Go watch this video. Hey everyone. So, I think both of us felt pretty strongly about wanting to share this with all of you. I don't feel like it's a secret that this video came out, but I, I want to push anybody who hasn't watched it to go mm -hmm. do so, because I think it's an incredibly powerful, like powerful video and very meaningful. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, trigger warnings for suicide, for mental illness, and yeah, um, just take care of yourselves, okay? Otherwise, I'll appear in your pantry and lick you, okay? We have an agreement now. You've signed an accord. So, anyway. <laughs> so, this is Mr. D'Angelo Wallace. D'Angelo Wallace is an incredibly well-known YouTuber who has made not only some pretty solid videos against uh, Shane mm -hmm. Dawson, but also kind of broke the whole, hey, I kind of think that Blair White... Um, lied about reading Robert Galbraith's book about mm -hmm. the evil trans serial killer. For those who don't know, D'Angelo Wallace has not been on YouTube for about nine months. Uh, D'Angelo is a million sub person who has two very successful channels and was doing Twitch streaming and was putting out these long form videos. And his commentary is amazing. I really like D'Angelo Wallace. Um, and I was really sad to see him disappear. When I noticed that he was gone, I wasn't seeing any new con content come up. It was really surprising because everything I found online just seemed like a lot of rumors and stupidness. Well, and I think I at one point went, hey, what happened? Like, we yeah, because we were listening to him pretty regularly. Yeah, yeah. So he's been gone for about nine months until as of June 19th, seven days ago, he put out this video. And this video is called Things Got Pretty Bad. And I'm not going to play it here because I want all of you to go fucking watch it. Okay? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. This video is harrowing as hell. We listened to this while making dinner and it was rough because D'Angelo goes into a story of how severe his anxiety and suicidal ideations were to the point where just trying to put out a video was impossible. D'Angelo talks about trying to set up the camera multiple times to have these talks. D'Angelo talks about trying to engage in multiple ways. And just none of it ever working. And D'Angelo kind of talks about the ways of how he deals with these sort of what he calls two parts of himself in percentages, right? There's this one part, which I think we can all resonate with, which is us when we're performing, right? It's still us, but it's a little bit distant. It's the whole, uh, was it Lindsay Ellis authenticity video? Like, you're, yeah, you're being you, but you're also doing a very specific version of you. And that's the one that can get by and can get up in the morning and brush its teeth and do all of the things it needs to do. The other one is the one that just wants to die. The one that just doesn't see a purpose to go, th go through with it all. And D'Angelo explains in great detail how in a lot of his life, it was percentages. Sometimes it'd be 70, 30, sometimes it'd be 60, 40. But there was always a part of him that wanted to live and keep going. And then nine months ago and one week, I suppose, if it's to the date, D'Angelo Wallace was at zero and 100. That the anxiety of having to perform to be a particular person, all of it basically became so overwhelming that he couldn't do it. I'm going to tell you real quick, again, we'll put the link for this in the link stock, but I want to be really clear about something here. The reason why I want all of you to go watch this, why Zena and I feel so strongly about this, is because I think this video is, needs to happen. There's a couple reasons. The first is, is that I just don't think we have enough discussions about mental illness. The fact of the mm -hmm. matter is, is that there is a lot of dem de demographic things here. One, to see a black man talk about mental illness is rarer than, say, white people. That's not to say that there aren't people that do their work and go to therapy and stuff, but there is a lot of distrust in professionals within the black community. And to have somebody speak so openly is really cool for a lot of reasons. But also just to see this coming from a non-white person is kind of neat. 
in my brain um because i don't see that Mm -hmm. as much you go through therapist youtube and you're gonna find you know white person after white person you go through uh you go through plural videos a lot of white plural people um but this is really needed and so seeing this and seeing how much he struggles and how much this stuff really sucked for him it was hard to watch and -hmm. i think it should be i think we forget how much mental illness is incredibly awful if you don't deal with mental illness, first off, I'm surprised. But second off, you're lucky. If you're someone that deals with minor mental illness, then you probably struggle against a lot of things in your life. And if you're someone who deals with severe mental illness, like I do, or my partner does, or members of our server do, you know what it's like for this stuff to cripple you, to make it so that you are struggling to continue to function and continue to move forward. I think the second thing that's important to me here is just we don't talk about the wear and tear YouTube does to people. Yeah. Back in March, um, I'm not going to go into the full story, but back in March, Zena and I took a particular side in the discussion and dealt with a lot of content creators or adjacent people to content creators, basically cutting us off, blocking us. Um, we lost connection to a couple communities. We, uh, we had a kind of falling out with a big number of folks, and I still stand by that decision. Yep. Fuck those people. But... The thing that really sucks is, is that in a lot of cases, this job really does wear on you sometimes. If you're a streamer like us, you might be doing okay for a while. We have been for quite some time. But occasionally you'll run into a piece of drama that you get pulled into. Something you can't get away from. Also, go ahead. Or bad news, like really massive bad news keeps happening, right? Either from our community, our various communities, or... You know, from politics at large, no, it it keeps happening. No. Well, and additionally, the thing here is, is to consider is I have no idea what it would be like to run a million subscriber YouTube channel. This channel itself has 1.48 million subs. This is huge. And so the thing is, is that I can't even imagine what it's like to have to deal with and and, and meet with an audience that large. To try to be honest and authentic with yourself while also being able to meet what their needs are or meet what their their desires are so that you maintain your actual watch base. Now, we've at least come into this with the idea that we're just going to be ourselves. This is why I'm so honest with you guys about basically every aspect of my life. And the reason for that is, is that I don't ever want to lose that authenticity because I think it's really important. It's a very big part of my life, being able to be honest and direct with you guys. Same for Xena. Mm-hmm. This gives us the ability to be here and hopefully never be swayed by our audience to take a position we don't believe in. The same truth with why I'll never leave therapy, you know, doing therapy is that one, I like doing therapy. I like being a therapist. So there's no reason for me to ever leave. So I'm not going to. But additionally, I never want to be beholden to you guys for my living. If one of you decides right now to increase your Patreon amount to $500 a month or $2,000 a month and wants to really pay us significant amounts to be doing more on YouTube, great. I'm still not quitting my job. I'm still not going to stream more. We can still stream maybe once or twice more a week. We always want to do more streaming. We just don't always have time. But the thing here is, is that that's the stress I deal with with stuff. And I deal with it by making sure that I'm not beholden to my audience and having to bend myself to get out content and do these things as much as maybe some of these other folks do. So running a million sub channel is daunting immensely. Yeah, I have no idea what we look as look like as a bigger channel, at least because for me, like a small community is is an easier place to run right like I'd, I'd love to be bigger but also um like those small connections right are a thing and oh. that changes when you've got a much larger scale well and think about with a youtube micro celebrity too like look look at someone like say like Lindsay ellis so Lindsay ellis within her own sphere that is twitter and youtube is very well known on this pla- on these platforms or was right very well known but in the greater world, probably not anywhere as much because the celebrity here is much more specific. And as such, you get into this weird place where if you're within your element, you're known and people treat you differently. 
Mm -hmm. for whatever that means. People will simp to me all the time. They'll flirt with me all the time. There'll be people who will interact with me and be very aggressive up front. Like there's people who just out and out ignore Xena and continue that bullshit. Like there are things that people do when they know us from this format that are very different than what happens if people don't know about this format. I've had clients who, you know, could dox me if they really want to do, I suppose. I hope they don't. Um, Probably a mark of how good I am as a therapist that no one's done that. Um, But the reality is, is that I've had clients find this channel and guess what? We've had to have conversations about it. And in some cases it has changed their opinion of me or changed their way of interacting with me going forward because now there's the parasocial aspect as well as the social therapeutic. So again, imagine the effects this has on someone's psyche, this feeling of always being on, but also being invisible in certain cases. If you're someone who, let's say you're, you know, a big celebrity, you're huge, you know, you're, you're, you know, uh, Zendaya or whatever, I don't know celebrities. Let's say you have a big falling out publicly, a big issue. Well, you could theoretically go do an Oprah special or do a 60 minute special or do something like that and talk about your story. You could be sought out by news and just get people to listen. And that's because you're known on a grand scale, right? Movies are a huge medium, but online spheres are not the same way. So imagine being someone who's dealing with harassment, doxing, and um, just plain, you know, bigotry or nastiness, but the greater world doesn't care or know. It's only in your microcosm. This is what happened to Contra, right? In the greater world, Contra's nobody. But within the YouTube sphere, Contra's huge. And her mm-hmm. falling out with the trans community and specifically the whole canceling thing was huge within that community. But outside of it, these people don't even know who Buck Angel is. They don't even know what the fuck the half this stuff is talking about. You guys have to understand that the, the social dynamic, even for us, which are, we're tiny. We're not even 5,000 subs yet. By the way, subscribe. The problem is, is that I don't know if I, I can fully communicate this because my experience is limited as a Xena's. So I just, I want you guys to understand that this video that D'Angelo Wallace did, this things got pretty bad, is really important. Mm-hmm. And I think the last thing that I really want to speak to about this and... um kind of just point out is the sheer level of vulnerability this man put on screen is incredible. I like to think that I try to be pretty vulnerable with you guys, and I was really impressed to see another content creator do that. Talking yeah, about same anxi- here. Yeah. Talking about anxiety and talking about how anxiety can lead to ideations is not something I hear a lot. We hear people talk about ideations in regards to depression, but dealing with so severe anxiety that you just it hurts. It physically hurts you to be that anxious. Well, that's that's where I was thought that was particularly impactful as well was describing the actual like the body pain, the yeah, body like, physical pain, the body load. Right, having anxiety is not just you know an emotional you're going crazy for five minutes thing. Like it's not just that. The god, the physical pain can trigger all sorts of shit too. Yeah, and so I guess the thing I just want to make clear is with this is that you know I want all of you to do me a favor is go watch this video. I can't speak highly enough about it. I think that there is an amazing amount of depth here and use, and I think that this type of mental health conversation isn't happening enough. Um, I'm really glad D'Angelo's back. I'm Mm -hmm. hoping D'Angelo stays, but if D'Angelo doesn't, I understand. D'Angelo, if for some weird reason you see this video, um, we really appreciate you. Yeah, absolutely. We're glad to have you back, and we're also sorry that you went through that. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'll just extend the idea that, you know, if D'Angelo sees this, again, I doubt it, but if that does happen, you know, feel free to reach out to us. Mm-hmm. You know, we try to talk to the content creators we, we want to connect with and we want to try to be of, you know, service and support to people. You know, we have come to a lot of people's aids, so, yeah. Um, yeah. because we, we like picking fights um, or just standing up for, you know, people. This definitely impacted me a lot. Um, you can tell because I'm still knitting through it and that's what I do when I'm, you know, dealing with stuff um and yeah no i I really appreciated hearing it especially with just how bad dealing with everything was for us the last several months you know and i'm Mm -hmm. I'm still kind of coming off of a lot of that going oh no that really was a whole lot of shit right um 
So I guess I really appreciate seeing this too, because it does help me feel like I can be, you know, more open as well. And kind of know that I'm at least, you know, not just off on my own with some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. No. So I think that's, I think that's perfect. And yeah, again, if you're dealing with really strong issues of mental illness, you know, check out our video, how to, how to find a therapist. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'll just make this known right now is that one thing I want to empower everyone to do when we're talking about looking for therapists is to make sure you ask your therapist very clearly what their political leanings are. How did they vote in the last election? Do they believe in abortion? Yep. Um, there's a post we put out there, which basically outlines very clearly. No, I don't care what kind of professional they are. Do your research. Don't work with people who want to marginalize you. Simple as that. Yep. Um, abortion, abortion rights, uh, trans rights, trans rights, gay marriage, gay marriage, LGBT stuff, kink stuff, plural stuff. Like if you need plural might be hard. Some people don't know that a lot. Yeah. Um, I only bring it up because if you're going to be with a therapist, no, nah, make sure that they know their shit about what you need them to know about. That's a thing, you know? Yeah. Or at least can learn it, right? That's either already know it or we'll learn it for you, right? Um, so, yeah, I think that's mm-hmm. good. Um, yeah, so uh, with that said, um, yeah, I guess uh, we will uh, see you in the next one then. Yeah. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Also, consider donating to us. You can support us on our website, transgirltherapist.org. You can also help us on our Patreon, link below, or you can become a member here on YouTube. Um, Thank you so much for watching.